Hi, my name is Jonathan Bamber, uh, co-founder of Burton and & Bamber, and we're a business around value addition in Kenya. We have a factory in Matu, and uh, we do a range of different products, and I hope you've had a chance to try them. If not, please have a look out for Sweet Tunda. We do, at the moment, we're doing dried fruits, uh, and that's dried mango, uh, banana, uh, pineapple, raspberries, and strawberries. And we do lots of fabulous products for, for children around roll-ups. We are also developing new products at the moment uh, using the orange flesh sweet potato and also offering a new pureed product using an aseptic uh, machine. I, I really hope you will go and buy them from the, from the shops in Carrefour or Naivas or Quick Mart and, and Chanarana. And please let us know your feedback. Tell us how you like them. This is my story. Before Burton and Bamba, I was a, a British diplomat uh, working in different parts of the world, uh, in Mozambique, Thailand, um, back in London, um, India, uh, and then I was involved in, in international development. And then from development it was uh, social enterprise, and that's really how we've ended up, ended up in Burton and Bamba. Um, I was involved with my business partner Ophelia in a solar business distributing solar products into the developing world and into disaster, disaster locations from Haiti, Pakistan, Ethiopia and then really it was, it was working with our team in Kenya uh, that uh, some opportunities emerged here around us talking to farmers who we were trying to sell our solar products to and the farmers said why don't you stop selling what you think we need and start buying what we produce. So it was out of that kind of aha moment that we had around buy what we produce and then why don't we buy what they produce and turn it into something. And, and it was the mango farmers that we first engaged um, up in Embu and realizing that uh, then, then we began to understand how many mangoes are wasted in Kenya. There's an excess supply of mangoes in, in Kenya and people simply don't know what to do with them. We realised actually why are we not doing something around value addition uh, with, this, with these fresh mangoes. And, uh, and then Burton & Bamba was formed and our, our brand which is on the shelves across East Africa called uh, Sweet Tunda. The ambition of our business is all about enabling small scale farmers to have a route to market for their produce. And the primary focus was around the mango. Um, uh, and some of the highlights really out of that learning um, over the last six years of being in this business is probably broken up into three, which is how we engage with our supply chain, uh, how we manufacture, and how we market our finished products. Um, I think the highlights are, with the, the first highlight around the farm and the supply chain, is the farmers were delighted to, to find a, uh, not even a new market, a market uh, for their fresh mangoes because prior to now the market they were just selling in the local shambas uh, on the side of the road in Itanga or, or, or Meru um, and the mangoes were being, were being wasted and farmers were losing hope so I think the highlight is that we've given a farmer some hope uh, that we can now buy their, buy their mangoes um, and give them an income. One of the highlights for me personally is interesting engaging with these farmers and sadly we don't see many young people in mango farming. It's often your quite older citizen uh, who is engaged on the shamba doing maybe 30 trees or 100 trees or 200 trees. They are of the older generation, even older than I am. Um, and it's, it's hard work. It's actually hard work running a, a mango farm. But uh, so, so it's been great to actually develop relationships with some of these farmers. On the, the manufacturing side, um, I think the, the highlights around 
we've we started with a dried mango and now we're at you know maybe iteration 10 and I think the iteration of the dried mango is getting better um, and beginning to compete uh, with with a South Africa or with a West Africa uh, dried dried mango that's on the market so I think we have um, I think we've scaled up this, uh, this uh, facility um, and now one of the larger players of, of dried fruit um, in Kenya. And um, so I think the highlight has really been learning through our team a process to take a fruit from A to Z and give it a, a natural feel, give it a taste that is, that is uh, that's refreshing, that's different um, and uh, certainly bring bring skills and, and technology into the business and into the team that maybe previously have not had experience with that type of technology. The other big highlight is, is building a brand in, in East Africa, starting in Nairobi. Um, and we started that by actually not paying lots of money for consultants to come up with a name. We asked our driver, Stephen, to take a few names into Thika and get feedback from, from potential customers around how we, what name would you like to call this dried fruit that we're bringing into the market. And the feedback we got was Sweetunda was number one. So really from Sweetunda we've iterated a little bit on the different types of packaging and branding and now we're, we're fairly happy with our local, local brand and local presence. Um, I think um, one of our first uh, customers was a fruit and vegetable shop in Nairobi and then we moved to the, the likes of Chandarana and Carrefour and, and subsequently Naivas and, and, and Quick Mart and, and lots of other smaller supermarkets. So Sweet Under is a, is a range of different products uh, of dried fruit. So we do mangoes are, is our king, king of the fruits, uh, but we also do bananas, pineapples, um, raspberries and strawberries. Um, and we've developed not only the basic dried fruit, but we also have a, have a roll up. Uh, they're called. Uh, they're more familiar in the US uh, uh, but it's basically a puree which you turn into a roll and then the children can unravel it and have fun as they eat a healthy snack. And we're really offering a, a, a healthy alternative to, to maybe sweets or, or other, other things that maybe are not so healthy. It's putting into children's uh, packed lunches, putting it into uh, professionals at their offices, um, uh, maybe when people are going on safari, uh, put it into the, the middle shelf in the car or the bus uh, that they can take a snack with them. Which doesn't, it's not messy, you don't, as much as we're competing with fresh fruit, pretty much most of the nutrients are retained within dried fruit. It just simply hasn't got so much moisture in it. So you don't have to cut and peel a mango when you're, when you're in the back of the car, you just have to open a sweet tunda and offer the sweet tunda to the family. So dried fruit is a naturally healthy um, product. We do not add any sugar uh, to, to the product. For our fruit roll-ups, we do add a little bit of honey. Um, but, but generally with dehydration, um, you're simply removing the moisture, but the nutrient gets concentrated within the dried fruit. So it is a, it's a, it's a healthy um, uh, snack. Uh, Obviously everything in moderation, uh, but it is a healthy snack. As a business, we want to continue to build on uh, engagement with farmers, but what we want to do now is move on to what new technologies can we introduce into Kenya, which haven't been used before. So we have a new aseptic uh, processing line, um, which will enable us to turn any type of fruit or vegetable into a puree and then you put it into an aseptic process and then into an aseptic bag which means the product or the puree which is, could be sweet potato or, or strawberry or mango or blueberry or, or even carrot or whatever it is a fruit or vegetable can be preserved with all its nutrients even more so than drying we can be preserved with all its nutrients in a 5, 10 or 20 litre bag for two years and then from those products, we want to then sell into the, the bakery market, the patisserie market, the dairy market, the, the smoothie market, uh, and then hopefully end up with, a, with a, a consumer facing product. At the moment, it's just a, it's a more of a bulk B2B product, 
but we hope to move into a B2C product, which is packing into small, small you know, juice packets. Leaving the security of um, a civil service life as a diplomat was actually quite easy. Um, I have not looked back at all. But um, moving to an entrepreneur's life where there is a huge amount of risk, um, where there is a huge amount of actually you are the last to get paid on payroll. Um, but all those things being, being considered, um, the journey has been a challenging one and, and I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't change it. Um, but, but I hope in the coming this year, we would really like to take this business to the, to the next level. Uh, we are still a young company, only six years old. We've got a, a great team around us. And, and I think as a, as a business and as the owner, as a co-founder of this business, I think we need to empower and enable our team to support the growth of this business. And, uh, and it will only grow if we enable our team because it can't grow just with us as the founders. It has been a challenging journey. You know, I'm a foreigner. Uh, we're foreigners as a family in, in Kenya. Um, but I think Kenya has been a fabulous place for foreigners to actually build a business. Um, and I think some of the bureaucracy is straightforward to registering a company. Um, but, but there are certainly other challenges around importation and clearing and challenges of getting containers through the border or through, the, through customs, that's a challenge. Um, but, but overall, I think Kenya is a, is a very, um, is a pretty business friendly environment. I think there is a little bit too much bureaucracy um, and sometimes even sending samples outside of Kenya to the wider world. It's, it's difficult which process you have to follow. So you need to learn these things and you have to make mistakes and get stuff sent back from overseas or, or literally thrown in the bin because you didn't quite follow that process. So I think there's, there's possibly too many bureaucratic hurdles. Um, I mean, just simply building a business here, you need money. And trying to, to, to raise money is, has, been, has been a challenge. Um, uh, but we, we're getting there. We've had some fabulous friends and family who've provided a huge amount of uh, support and, and, and investment. Um, we've been, uh, had the generous support of a few donors and, and they've been generous to us. Um, but it's, I think every day it's a new journey. You're not quite sure what's going to be your next challenge. I think probably one of the biggest ones located where we are in, in Yatta, in Machakos, is power and water. Um, power is intermittent, uh, you're never quite sure when the power is going to come off or come back on again. You've got maybe six tons of mangoes in your dryer and, it, and the power might go off for three hours, it might actually go off for 12 hours. So you know that's a huge risk to a business, um, not knowing when your power is going to come on and you spent you know, the last day with 50 staff peeling and cutting all these mangoes and other fruits. Um, water is a challenge in, in, in northern Machakos, uh, getting water from the Faro here. Um, yeah, these are, these, are, these are real headaches actually. As I've, as I've mentioned, uh, power has been a major problem. One way to address that to ensure consistent power is to put solar on the roof. So with uh, some match funding from USAID, uh, we're now just about to put on 56 kilowatts of power. Um, being supplied by a local Kenyan company, uh, hopefully within the next uh, few days. So that will offer us the ability to turn on the dryers um, or even to maybe cover all the refrigeration that we need. So at least we know that we have product that we can protect, whether it's in the dryer or in the freezer. Uh, and we can possibly build on that up to about 80 to 90 kilowatts in this facility. Our vision for Burton and Bambo is, is to really have far more value addition happening in Africa and not uh, overseas. We think Kenya is quite able to produce a shelf-ready product into a supermarket, whether it's in Nairobi, New York, Paris or Melbourne. And that's what we're doing. We're doing white label packaging for two companies at the moment. And we're excited about that. Maybe we'll take Sweet Under elsewhere as well. But we think Kenya is absolutely ready to supply finished products to a global market 
not just a bulk ingredient where no value addition has, has happened here. What we've learned about Kenya is Kenya is a, is a fabulous place. It's a great, there's a great ecosystem in Kenya of, of, of so much innovation, whether it's in producing new drinks or uh, whether it's beers or ciders or, or creams or there's just or even tech solutions. There's so much innovation in Kenya and, and we're kind of reinventing, we're not even reinventing, we're using old technology. Um, so I think if as a parting shot, you know, what technology is being used outside of Africa that you can bring into Africa because the infrastructure is, is, is really here actually to, to whether it's value addition around food or whatever it is. The infrastructure is here to enable you to do that. You have people, you've got skilled uh, graduates who we employ here. Um, so a, a parting shot would be possibly look at technology as, a, as an enabler and, and look at what technology is being used elsewhere that we can bring in here. Um, build a team around you. Uh, you're not going to do this on your, on your own. Um, uh, and bring in, bring in more money than we did. Uh, money is certainly an enabler. Um, so, so to raise, raise, raise a bit of money before you start because it can be a very frustrating um, a challenge of just simply not having enough every month. So I think raise a bit more money than you think you need, probably double what you think you need. Um, but um, yeah, I think Kenya, there's some great, great opportunities here um, and uh, go for it. So that was my story of turning a wasted product where there is excess supply of mangoes into a value add uh, snack item for the local and international markets. I'd be most interested to know what your story is.